Hello, my name is Jonathan Standing. I'm a freelance concept artist, illustrator, story artist, and part-time teacher. Um, this tutorial is for Imagine Effects magazine issue 117, and it's in um, response to the question, how do I create perspective lines in Photoshop? Um, this technique works for pretty much every version of Photoshop that has the pen tool in it, so certainly anything uh, that's been a part of Photoshop Creative Suite um, moving forward. This is CS4, obviously there's some newer versions of the software out there, um, but the good thing about this technique is that you can apply it to just about anything. So, I want to draw a ship. I've mocked in sort of basically what my perspective is going to be, but it, it's definitely inaccurate. It's going to need some fixing. So here, using the pen tool, I've made an open-ended triangle, and then using the black um, uh, pen tool selection arrow that selects the whole of the path, I've duplicated that path. And now what I'm doing here is using the white selection arrow, which selects the components of the path, to consolidate those points together. And you can already see what that's given me is a vanishing point. So here what I'm doing is aligning the ends of these perspective guides to points on my design. And then what I'm going to do is click and drag over that vanishing point and pull it off into, um, into sort of arbitrary space. Uh, to try and find where the vanishing point is for the perspective that I've begun to establish with the drawing. Um, using the black selection tool there, I selected all of the paths and just duplicated them. Um, and this now in turn is going to become my second vanishing point. So in the same way, I'm going to line up these perspective guides with points on the ship. And then I'm going to click and drag over all of the points that form the vanishing point right here and then drag it left and right to try and find where that vanishing point is. So now that I've established both vanishing points, I have mobile and adjustable perspective guides. I think I probably have a few too many here, to be honest with you, but um, the beauty of these is that you can move them around, adjust them, put them wherever you need them, duplicate them. Um, but what you can see here I've done is I've made a second layer, and I've used the brush tool to stroke uh, that path. If you go into the path um, palette, in the little drop-down menu on the right-hand side of that palette, you'll see Stroke Path. So with all of the paths selected, you can stroke them with a brush with a color um, and lay your perspective grid into another layer, and then you can adjust its opacity. The other advantage of that, too, is that um, if you need to transform something in your image, if your paths are visible, Photoshop by default will try and transform the paths, so you have to hide your paths before you can transform the scale of the ship or skew it or whatever you want it to do. So having your perspective guides in a layer is advantageous because you can still see them while you make that transformation. Um, the other um, note that I should make is that um, the hotkey on a Macintosh is F for changing your screen view. Um, basically, you want the window in which you're working to fill the screen in the same way that I have now. What that enables you to do is to um, translate the image from left to right, top to bottom, sort of freely without being constrained by the proportions of the screen. Um, that's really important if you have a vanishing point that's somewhere way off the canvas. Um, so if you consolidate your points to make your vanishing point on the canvas, you can really zoom in and make sure that they line up properly with one another. Um, but then you want to zoom out to find where those vanishing points uh, meet uh, in your perspective. Um, here I'm just trying to figure out the opposing angles for um, some angled uh, wingtips on this uh, spacecraft, I think. I was doing for a second there, I think I'm going to come back to it. Um, I'm making this design purely for the sake of this tutorial. It's still a little bit generic, although I, I don't I hate it. Um, so here I think what I'm doing is moving some of my uh, perspective guides out of the way, because um, I just have a few too many really, um, while I kind of strengthen and improve the quality of the drawing. What I do is I, normally is I find I kind of have a bank of them to left and right uh, to which I can refer. Um, here I'm working out the opposing angles of um, some wingtips um, that are going to flare up from the main wings. Um, you're not just tied to using the path tools as kind of your vanishing points. You can use them in other ways to figure out the scale and angle of um, components of your design. So it's a very, very flexible way to kind of use the, the tool set. Um, so here I'm just adding a fin on the back of the ship just to try and give it some kind of uh, meaning, maybe. Um, and here I've uh, used my line work to make a selection, and I've dumped some tone into uh, a layer. 
and here I'm just adding in a multiply layer, some more tones on here to uh, establish what my lighting scheme is. So it's um, a, a light source is coming from the upper left hand corner of the image, falling across the ship and it's giving me the darker undercarriage to the ship and then also casting some shadows onto the wing closest to us from the body of the ship. Um, and here I'm uh, just trying to um, give myself a selection area for the cockpit. So I filled in the cockpit shape. Um, so now I can apply color um, or highlights or whatever I want to to these glass pieces of the cockpit separately and distinctly from the rest of the, the spacecraft. So I keep making my um, perspective guides visible and invisible. The hotkey for that on a Macintosh is Command-H. Uh, I believe it's Control-H on a PC. Um, they're just great as kind of a tool. When you don't need them, you can make them disappear. Anytime you need to reference them to figure out how some of these details, uh, you know, cut lines in the ship are going to um, fit into perspective. Command H, they pop up, they're there, they're available for you to use. You can kind of paint underneath them. Um, the paths themselves are simply vector information. There's no pixels there. They don't have any effect on your um, what's the, the content of your layer. Um, so in that sense, they're very useful for kind of... Um, acting as a guide and being kind of mobile and adjustable. So here I'm applying just a basic color to the uh, ship to kind of give it a color scheme. And here I'm going to make a um, simple geometric design um, that I'm going to apply to the ship. So here I'm trying to figure out the perspective um, that the design is going to conform to. So I'm going to transform the design. So that's why I stroke the paths again, so that I can hide the paths to make the transformation of this orange paint work that's going to go on the side of the ship. Um, if I'd not hidden the paths, right now the, the Photoshop would be trying to um, transform the paths, not the pixel information. Um, so by creating this layer with my guides in it, I still get to see my perspective guides, but I can transform this uh, this orange information um, to conform to the, the shape of the ship. Uh, I'm using the transform tool here um, just to try and bend the shape over the ship a little bit so that it follows its overall shape. It's a tiny bit crude, but uh, I think it'll do. <laughs> uh, here I'm having to adjust that one uh, little section of it where it intersects with the um, the uh, cockpit. It didn't quite match the perspective of the, the image. And there I've just played with the different transparency settings uh, for the layer, just to try and get the color to kind of like really read as being this very bright, vibrant orange and a nice contrast to the very cool kind of muted um, blue that I have for the body of the ship. Uh, here I'm just painting in some uh, details, uh, some brighter accents. and adjusting the information on the uh, cockpit layer just to try and make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more convincing maybe. Um, casting some light onto the uh, plane of the cockpit that's facing towards us so it isn't quite so dark. And here I'm just kind of um, adding, I think in another multiplier layer, some more blue uh, chroma to the, um, the side closest to us of the ship just to try and pump some color into the shadow there so it, it's a bit less kind of um, drab, I suppose, give it some life. Um, and I'm painting some corresponding highlights onto the far side of the ship and onto the wing where it's probably receiving some direct light from our main light source. Just trying to pump up the contrast between the highlights and the shadows. Um, and here I'm just very quickly dumping in a background just for the sake of having something there for the ship to kind of play against. Um, so I'm just putting in some uh, brown streaks to imply motion. I've applied the uh, motion blur filter to it uh, and then skewed it using the transform tool. Uh, I just put in some noise there um, just to try and give it some texture uh, and then blurred it again. And here I'm making the shadows even darker uh, on the side of the ship facing us, um, just pumping up that contrast, trying to make it feel more three-dimensional. 
and then lightening the background uh, just so that it competes a little bit less with the ship in the foreground. Um, these are all layers that are underneath the ship so I can kind of uh, adjust them without affecting any of the information on the, the ship itself. And there I'm just trying to put like a really bright kind of um, reflective highlight on the uh, the cockpit really to make it feel like it's made out of glass uh, as opposed to kind of the metal of the, the body of the ship. And then um, here I'm just adding some more sort of brighter, more saturated information to the ground. Um, and I'm going to filter it a couple of times, skew it a little bit more just to try and give it that sense of motion. And then I'm pretty much done. So thank you very much for listening. I hope it was uh, informative and enjoyable.